Hello, in this lesson I'm going to describe how a diffraction grating is used to measure the wavelength of a light source. So um, first of all we need to understand what a diffraction grating is and then secondly what practical measurements would be needed to calculate lambda for a laser light source. So casting your minds back to a previous lesson on Young's double slit experiment, Thomas Young in 1801 um, demonstrated that um, demonstrated that light is a wave and first of all he needed to create a coherent light source so it's got to be monochromatic a single wavelength he achieved that by using a filter since uh, any lamp available at that time would produce uh, lots of different wavelengths mixed together which doesn't produce an interference pattern he shone that through a narrow slit and then that light in turn shone on double slits uh, which then created the uh, interference pattern um, so it's known as a double path experiment because um, he needed to use uh, a, sing a, a single slit to create the light to shine through the double slits. So when you carry out this experiment, uh, you can see the interference pattern and you get that uh, in series of stripes or not so much, they're not very well defined either. You can see on that image there to the right that uh, they're a bit kind of uh, smudged. They're referred to as fringes. Okay, so it's caused by the diffraction, the spreading out of light when it passes through a narrow slit and where those two sources overlap we get interference. Um, and remember that that interference depends on the path, the difference in path length of the two waves arriving at any given point. If the path length is uh, exactly the same or is has a difference of uh, an integer number of wavelengths then you get constructive interference and a bright uh, fringe and you get dark areas where you get destructive interference so um, the problem with a diffraction grating uh, sorry with a double slit is that it doesn't let a great deal of light through a diffraction grating hasn't just two slits but hundreds and hundreds of parallel lines that are engraved onto glass or plastic so this lets a lot more light through and produces much brighter maxima and the other thing is that um, instead of producing the pattern that you see on the screen now it, it produces a series of very well defined and equally spaced dots on the screen and this gives us much more accurate measurements than that rather smudged pattern if you wanted to measure the distance between maxima you could do but it would require a bit of estimation uh, because you've got to judge the middle of where the fringes are whereas if you use a diffraction grating as you'll see the dots are quite small and evenly placed uh, which means that it's much easier to get accurate um, measurements so how does it work so a diffraction grating think of it not like a double slit but as a, a series of slits and we shine um, coherent light from a laser, a red laser, onto the diffraction grating and the light uh, passes through uh, the gaps. Um, uh, you can see on my diagram there the gaps in the diffraction grating don't match the rays of light that I've drawn. My, my image is somewhat in error there, apologies for that. So the, the light is shone onto a screen and what we see is a series of dots with nothing in between. Uh, these are called maxima. The one that's straight ahead of the laser with an undeviated path, that's called zeroth order maximum. And then either side of that you have what's called a first order maximum. And then outside that, second order maxima, and so on going outwards from the uh, middle. So um, imagine a ray of light travelling from the diffraction grating to the screen. That red ray of light there has travelled a certain distance to the first order maximum and this green ray of light has traveled from the next diffraction uh, next gap in the in the grating and reached the same spot now if it's a bright spot it must be an area of constructive interference otherwise um, you wouldn't see a bright spot so if it's an area of constructive interference that means that the path difference must be an exact number of wavelengths because this is the first order maximum, the path difference was one wavelength. Okay, So the reason the spots are really bright is you don't just get two rays of light arriving from two diffraction gratings. 
what you get is many rays of light arriving from all these different ones all together, which gives us lovely bright light. OK, so um, the path difference there of those two waves is is one wavelength. So if I draw a little diagram on there, OK, that pale blue area, that's the difference in length. That red ray of light is longer than the green ray of light by that blue part there. Um, so what we want to know is theta, the angle um, between the grating and the uh, the two rays of light, or the red ray of light. And we do that uh, from uh, uh, <clears throat> measuring on the on the apparatus. If we knew that value of theta, that angle, uh, we know the spacing of the diffraction grating. Um, and therefore, we could use that to calculate lambda, the uh, wavelength of the light. So if I just enlarge that diagram. OK, so on that diagram, AB is the wavelength of the light, because this is the first order maximum in that equation, AB equals N uh, lambda, uh, N is 1. So AB equals lambda. And AC is the distance between the slits D. We know that because it tells us on the diffraction grating. So with a bit of simple uh, geometry, sine theta equals lambda over d. So if we knew what theta was, we know what d is, then we could use that to calculate the uh, wavelength of this light. OK, so the general equation you need to know is d sine theta equals n lambda. Right, so how do we find theta. So if you imagine this line here between the diffraction grating and the zeroth order at maximum, the angle that um, the first order, the ray of light to the first order maximum makes from that point is theta. That's the same angle that we're after because uh, those are those triangles are similar. So to work out that angle theta, we can make some straightforward measurements from our apparatus uh, because we need to know big D, the distance of the diffraction grating and the screen. And we uh, also know X, the distance between the maxima. So if we know two sides of that triangle, again, we can use some straightforward algebra to work out what theta is from that. OK, so in order to work out the wavelength of the light, we need a diffraction grating of a uh, known distance between the um, the lines and then we need to know the distance of the diffraction grating from the screen and the separation of the maxima from those fairly straightforward measurements we can do uh, a simple bit of algebra to work out uh, what the wavelength of the light is so uh, what, I, what i didn't say there is to work out theta there you, you tan theta is the separation of the um, the maxima divided by the distance from the diffraction grating to the screen. Now, something to be aware of when you're doing this calculation is to make sure you've got SI units. In order to get the wavelength to come out in metres, uh, or it'll be a small fraction of a metre, um, you need to make sure that the units you put in are correct. So you will be measuring probably in centimetres or millimetres. You must ensure that that is converted to metres when you do the calculation or you won't get the right answer. Um, because this is a red laser, you should know what wavelength approximately you expect because one of the things you need to know um, is for the electromagnetic spectrum, uh, the, what, the average wavelength in each wave band. That's something we covered in an earlier lesson and you need to make sure that you can recall that so that you know what a reasonable answer would be. So here are the steps. You note the number of lines per millimetre on the diffraction grating and shine a laser through the grating to create a series of maxima on the screen and measure the distance from the screen to the image big D. Now, actually, what I would do uh, is to is to set the distance to be a straightforward number like one metre in order to uh, make the calculations a bit simpler. So once you've got the maxima on the screen, you measure the distance between the maxima. So the easiest way to do that is to measure several and then calculate an average from that. And then we'll, we use D and X to calculate theta. And then once we've done that, we use the distance between the slits. So you know how many lines per millimeter there are on the slide, it tells you. So um, you just do one over that number to calculate the distance between the slits. Remember to convert to meters. And then you can use d sine theta equals n lambda to or rearranged 
to calculate theta, the wavelength of the light. Okay, so that's what uh, you need to be able to do. Uh, what you should do now is once you understand that is you should watch the uh, video that I've created uh, of the experiment that was done in the classroom with, it's got the measurements in it, so what I'd like you to do is I would like you to actually use those measurements to find out what the wavelength of the light from that laser was. There we go. See you next time.